Hey, I'm Joel with Power Stance Import Export, and thanks for checking this video out. It is for an eBay listing, but if you happen to stumble across it through a random YouTube search or suggestion and have any questions about these vehicles, don't hesitate to give us a call at the number listed above. Speak to me directly, or you can find us online, Facebook, Instagram, or this YouTube channel, or even the eBay store at Power Stance Import Export. We scan the globe for Land Rover Defenders, even places like Germany. So if you've ever wanted a Land Rover Defender, check us out and thanks for watching the video. Hey folks, and up for sale today, we've got a lovely 1999 Land Rover Defender 110 three-door with the TD5. All right, this is an import from Spain, so it is left-hand drive. It's now located here in Michigan and comes with a clean, clear Michigan title. So let me walk you around the vehicle. I'll show you the inside, the outside, the underside, and we'll take it for a test ride. Now, starting off here at the front, at the business end, this is the TD5, five-cylinder, two-and-a-half liter. This is the successor of the 300 TDI. So these came out in late 98, early 99. So we are now able to import these under the 25 year rule. So I'm super excited to have my first TD5. No, 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 this is my second one. Uh, but first left-hand drive TD5 for sure. Um, so the TD5, I put out another video if you want to check a look at it, comparing the TD5 to the 300. Um, more complex, but more horsepower able to tune these you can add bigger turbos bigger intercoolers and get a good amount of horsepower and they can actually be pretty quick which is nice a um, couple new parts here under the bonnet um, new steering um, steering shaft uh, and take a look at those footwells great shape no repairs no rust all factory paint there on the bulkhead and this is why we go to spain to get these vehicles because the bulkhead is in mint condition the doors are not rusty. The chassis is perfectly original. And let's take a look at the bottom of the footwells here. Again, no repairs, not covered in wax oil. Outriggers are in great shape. Door bottoms all good as well. No rust or repairs there. And the chassis, obviously that's what we wanna see. Mint condition, little bit of surface rust but this could all be taken care of with a little bit of WD-40 and some steel wool or something. Maybe a quick coat of paint on there, but as is, it's mint condition for a 25 year old vehicle. Doesn't get much better than that. All right, and then the rear cross member, same deal. No repairs, no welds there. This is all original and in really good shape. Could be cleaned up, a little bit of rust here. That's all surfaced. This could be sanded down and repainted, no problemo. And this is where they normally get kind of rusty in here as well. And as you can see, that's all really good sheet metal. All right, so with all that being said, great running and driving vehicle, very rust-free, very clean, uh, but it does have some flaws in the bodywork and in the paint. It has been repainted. Um, as you can see, some paint flaking here. Uh, but the capping's all great as well. Um, all right, so the paint and the bodywork moving along. A little bit of creasing here, a little tiny dents from off-road use. Um, but no corrosion at all in the body panels. And as you can see, back side of the bulkhead as well. Super clean, all factory original paint there. So none of the rust issues that you have with um, some of the North American spec ones or some of the ones from England, but uh, it it could use a full paint job Like for instance this corner here. I think this was rolled on Because um, it's a pretty flat paint Compared to the door the door is a little bit sh shinier. Maybe a single stage paint or a um, Clear coat on there, but the uh, front quarters are a little bit duller and a little bit creamier You can kind of see the contrast there 
between the two colors. So paint's not perfect, but other than that, very good condition, uh, very clean underneath. Let's take a look inside. There's the passenger door as well. No welds or repairs on the doors. Passenger seat. Um, this is an Exmoor trim seat cover. So that's aftermarket. These have been replaced. Tiny little bit of a rip here. We do have an aftermarket um, floor mat as well. It goes across the whole tunnel and behind the fuse box there. So it gives a little bit of sound deadening. This is uh, factory original vinyl on the seat boxes. Land Rover floor mats. And moving around here to the back. And there's another section that's been repainted. And uh, it's definitely had some Bondo work done to it. As you can see, a little bit of um, mediocre work here, I would say. So the corner could be replaced. Again, if you want to do a full paint job on this thing, it's going to need minor body work. But uh, everything else is pretty straight. Now, in the back here, we do have a wide open blank canvas for benches, for camping, for work, whatever you want to do back here. Tons of space rubber floor mat there's actually a custom uh, spare tire carrier right there and i believe that was a welding uh, a rack to hold a welder because there were some welding sticks left over in there and we do have the factory jack as well which is pretty rare the uh, jack support the wrench the lug nut wrench and everything is there um so you hardly ever see that and there's the back side of the rear cross member again and no headliner uh, there are some sound deadening panels up there, but uh, super wide open view with these windows. And these windows were all silicone shut. And so I have uh, removed all four of them, taken them apart, put new felt in the channels, cleaned all the silicone off and repainted the frames. A uh, bunch of work done to the windows. So those are all in good shape now. We do have the flat black wheel arches and we do have a Brand new set of Cooper Discover STT Pros on the rear with 16 inch steel wheels. And then on the fronts, these are not brand new, but they are about 90% tread. So great, uh, pretty great set of tires. The STT Pros are great tires, uh, pretty quiet and great off-road, great on-road. All right, so let's go ahead and start it up. We've got 241,000 kilometers, which is about 144,000 miles, so not too, too many. But it has been around. So she fires up. And if you've seen in the other videos with the TD5 or the 300, you'll see these are a lot quieter, less vibration. Like this motor is hardly shaking compared to the 300. And uh, no smoke out of the tailpipe either. So let's go ahead and go underneath the vehicle and then we'll take a test drive. All right, starting off here in the rear and there, there is a little bit of Spanish mud still stuck on here, but uh, brakes look to be in great shape, actually pretty clean, no rust, just a little bit of dirt. Shocks and springs are all good. The springs look like they've, they're newish, so they've been replaced. And I see a new brake line there new a frame ball joint as well nothing dripping out of the fill plug of the rear diff and then the uh, passenger side calipers discs dust covers all in place as well springs and shocks all look good and then here's another look at the rear cross member or the rear chassis beautiful shape no repairs needed at all now this is the driver's side. There's a good look at the rear axle. We do have a new rear drive shaft. Uh, just replaced that with universal joints as well. Bushings on the control arms look to be replaced. Chassis, again, just a little bit of surface rust on there. And a lot of this actually popped out when it was at sea on the way over here because uh, of the salty air. So hardly any rust at all on this chassis. Can't reiterate it enough. It's a clean chassis. All right. Center diff looks great. New drive, new prop shaft up front as well. Um, and there's a good look at the front axle. And then here's your battery box. That's about the cleanest battery box I've ever seen. Great shape. 
All right, passenger side, there's the rear axle, there's the new prop shaft. There's your fuel filter right there, or the rear fuel filter. Um, shocks look to be in pretty decent shape. Control arm bushings, middle outriggers. Again, beautiful shape. There's the uh, under seat box where the computer is and everything under the passenger seat. Sheet metal all looks good there. There's your center diff. There's your gearbox. And front outrigger. Okay, up front here, all the ball joints look to be new. They've been replaced. Swivel seals look good. No leaking out of there. Shocks and springs up front look to have been replaced as well. Um, front axle no leaking out of that fill plug either there's the bottom of the motor looks pretty clean i don't see a leak coming out of the uh, oil pan front steering arm the uh, ball joint there looks good as well and then the driver's side swivel seal all looks good i don't see anything leaking out of there either and then there's a good look at the entire undercarriage pretty decent folks all right and then there's another look at the front dumb irons another notoriously rusty area on these vehicles right here and as you can see beautiful shape okay so if you stuck with me this far um you'll get to see the best part the test drive all right so let's go ahead and uh, take her for a spin down the road and I'll do all the gear changes, acceleration, braking, and steering and all that stuff. Okay, so this is pretty wide open in the back without any sound bending or insulation or anything like that. So it's gonna be a little bit noisier than a county edition Defender with all the seats and all the uh, headlining and all that stuff, but Right off the bat, you can feel the difference between the TD5 and the 300. The acceleration, quite noticeable. Definitely a smoother, quieter engine. There's third gear. Pulls quite nicely uphill. Gear changes are nice and smooth. A couple little rattles up here in the dashboard. But all in all, pretty decent, smooth ride. Alignment seems to be fairly straight, maybe a tiny pull to the right. This might need a small alignment if there is such a thing. Um, it's pretty much either all or nothing. So uh, there's third gear. Going uphill. Perfect, yeah, there's no hesitation in the motor there. It goes uphill in third gear. At, you know, we're only doing 25 miles an hour. So um, pretty good low end torque. All right, so I'll downshift to second gear and we'll accelerate. All right, that's 35, 40, and third gear. And then there's fourth gear and fifth gear. So handles the bumps in the road pretty good. You can tell the suspension and bushings are all good. All right, so we'll get hard on the brakes here. Pretty smooth, no squeaking at all in the brakes. I actually feel a tiny rub in the tires there. Sometimes, sometimes previous owners will take the uh, <laughs> the stops out of the um, the steering stops out so they can get a better turning radius. Uh, so there's no reason why these stock size tires should rub. That's probably the that's probably what's going on with that. Um, all right, so there's reverse gear. Everything's working properly. And again, great visibility out of these windows. So let's go through the gear changes one more time. There's first gear. Second gear. Yeah, it pulls quite nicely. Oh, there's a turkey. And fifth gear. All right, pretty decent drive. 
I don't hear any serious bumps or rattles coming out of the suspension or out of the drive line. Everything feels nice and solid. All right, thanks for watching.